Hello, I'm going to talk to you today about the Functionalist and Marxist theories about the role of education in contemporary society. Last time we learned how functionalists, um, oops, my picture's moving, sorry, how functionalists are consensus sociologists. That means they see society as being largely harmonious, whereas Marxists see society as being based on conflict. The conflict being between the bourgeoisie, the ruling class, and the proletariat, who are the working class. So today we're going to look at some individual sociologists for these approaches. So for functionalism, we're going to look at Durkheim, Parsons, Davison, Moore, and Merton, whereas for Marxism, we're going to look at Althusser, Bulls and Gintis, and Willis. It's just the, the sheet that we looked at last time for functionalism. And we've what we're thinking about today is education is one of these organs within society. It's a social institution which works with other social institutions to create social solidarity, this feeling that everyone belongs all together. But how exactly does it function? What is its specific job in maintaining the health of the whole society? So Durkheim, the founding father of sociology, says that schools create social solidarity. It does this by passing on norms and values. And remember, the passing on of norms and values is called socialisation, so transmitting norms and values from one generation to the next. He also said <clears throat> that schools are society in miniature. So in schools, children learn to interact with other members of the school community and to follow a, set, uh, sorry, a fixed set of rules. This experience prepares children for interactions uh, with members of society as an adult and accepting the social rules. The only functionalist. Parsons was another functionalist. He said that schools bridge the gap between uh, the family and wider society. So schools do this by helping people to move from particularistic values within the family to universalistic values within society. Particularistic values um, apply within the family when children are treated as individuals, so their individuals' likes and dislikes, for example, are taken into account. Society doesn't treat people like this. Within society, the individual is judged against the standards that apply equally to all members of society, according to function lists. So education helps to ease this transition so the exam system judges all students on merits and school rules such as wearing uniform are applied to all pupils equally. So the other sort of function of schools according to Parsons is that schools pass on two major values. So firstly the value of achievement but secondly the value of equal opportunity. So remember functionalists believe that society is meritocratic, that all people are treated equally such as Davis and Moore, believe that schools have a sort of a more whole society uh, job. So they say that schools are a system of social stratification. They divide people into subgroups. They do this as a, a because their sort of primary function is that of role allocation. So sifting people according to their abilities so that their talents can be matched with a job for which they're best suited. So for instance, take me, I might be doing alright as a teacher, but I would be an absolutely rubbish brain surgeon. I shake all the time, I don't like blood, I'm not very, uh, I don't have very good hand-eye coordination. So in that sense, school has helped me to realise where I would be best suited. Also, not doing particularly well in science meant that I couldn't then progress to the next step within science and, you know, sort of guided me more towards uh, a humanities type job. Merton says that schools have sort of two main functions. They have a manifest function, which is sort of the obvious function, and the latent function, which is sort of the sort of uh, covert, undercover function. So Merton says that a school's manifest function is to educate children, giving them important information. So the curriculum, so being taught that two and two equals uh, four. I'm only joking, I do know that two and two equals four. But school's latent function is passing on the norms and values, and this is known as the hidden curriculum. Uh, functionally see this as actually being a good thing because it creates social solidarity long terms, but Marxists don't necessarily agree turn our attention. So this is our sheet from last time and we've got to remember that education is part of this superstructure. So education supports and looks after the economy to make sure that the proletariat, the poor people, don't rise up and rebel against the bourgeoisie, the rich people within. 
Althusser is quite a famous uh, Marxist. He believes that schools pass on false class consciousness and they do this because they're an ideological state apparatus. So it's almost like mind control. They tell students what the bourgeoisie want them to know. We've also got Bulls and Gintis. And Bulls and Gintis say that schools operate on the correspondence principle. This means that work sort of casts a long shadow over the education system. Education operates in the interest of those who control the workforce, the bourgeoisie. So schools pass on a hidden curriculum, making a subservient workforce, and the subservient workforce are down here at the bottom, holding up and looking after the rest of society. Um, so the subservient workforce accepts the social hierarchy. They also say that schools um, pour or teachers pour information into their students' heads. So it encourages passivity, um, and by encouraging passivity, what they're doing is making sure that the proletarian never rise up and rebel against the bourgeoisie. We also have um, Willis, and Willis says that the... Um, his study is called Learning to Labour, sorry, and he says that education is linked to capitalism. So not all school children passively accept um, the false class consciousness which is being passed to them. He studied a group who were, called, who were sort of called the lads, and they had a sort of counter-school culture. So they laughed at conformist students, they saw no value in... They saw no value in education and the qualifications, um, and they thought the school was mostly about having a laugh. Uh, the lads found school boring and tried to identify with the adult world by smoking, drinking alcohol and not wearing school uniform properly. <clears throat> These pupils didn't defer to authority, nor were they sort of obedient or docile. They rejected the belief that hard work would lead to success, so they were rejecting that m idea of a meritocratic society. The lads had very little in common with sort of the conformist pupils that Bulls and, McGin uh, Bulls and Gintis describe. What Willis saw was actually by having this counter school uh, culture, they were prepared really well for the sort of future work in the factory shop floor. Um, so, in rejecting school, lads partially see through the capitalist system. However, in the end, rejecting school merely leads them into some of the most exploitative jobs capitalism has to offer. So, by not doing well in school, they then end up being exploited by contemporary society. Um, so that's our functionalist and Marxist theories about the role of education in contemporary society. Um, remember, make some good notes and I'll see you next lesson. Bye.